You are probably wondering why I carry a bedroll around my neck and a haversack rather than a knapsack or a rucksack. The answer is that it weighs less and it's more comfortable for me. During the war between the states in the 1860s, soldiers quickly learned what was necessary and what wasn't. Soldiers were issued knapsacks and although knapsacks could carry a great deal, they were heavy and the straps were uncomfortable. Gradually, over the years, many soldiers dumped their knapsacks and uh, used bedrolls to carry their belongings instead. On the opposite side of the bedroll, I carry a haversack, and this contains what I need uh, during the day. Food, water, a compass, a map, and things like that. Some people prefer to keep additional items in their pockets. I'm going down to the lake to spend the night. The weather is perfect. Spring flowers are starting to bloom and I'm going to forage for supper along the way. Would you like to come along? I'd enjoy the company. Here's something tasty. This is wood sorrel. It's similar to clover, but each leaflet is heart-shaped. It really is yummy. It um, has a tangy flavor. I like to add it to soup or salad. Uh, so depending on, on what I find today, I'll either have a soup or salad tonight. Cool, a wax myrtle bush. I'll, I'll take some of the leaves uh, to repel mosquitoes and then also maybe make a tea out of it. Along with the uh, wax myrtle is a vine, the jasmine, uh, Louisiana jasmine it's sometimes called. Uh, do not eat the leaves from this or the flowers. It's highly poisonous. It smells really, really good, but do not take it. Oh look, crying among the violets are wood lice. I found my supper, roly polies, wood lice, pill bugs, they're called different things. They're crustaceans related to shrimp or prawns and they're very tasty I've read. Should be good. Let me put them here in my container so they don't get away. They live on decaying material. They're perfectly safe to eat, but you need to cook them first uh, because they may have viruses or bacteria in them. But other than that, they are, are really good. I'll have some more hiding down there, all, all rolled up. I've been told also that they're good for indigestion because the calcium on the outside uh, helps uh, uh, ease stomach acids.
I'm going to set my shelter up between these two trees right here and right here. It overlooks the lake, which is about 100 yards in that direction. And I should be able to see sunrise in the morning, too. In the 1800s, people made things by hand. I made this bow saw as an example. It's a little bit of an unusual design. I bent a, a piece of green wood and then attached the saw blade to it. Works pretty well. I'm going to use it to cut some dead wood over here. Uh, the dead wood will be uh, turned into a mosquito bar and that will hold the mosquito netting so it, so it stays away from my face and the mosquitoes don't bite me tonight. The mosquito bar is finished. It goes across the back of the tent and then I'm going to attach the netting to this using a, a rock. And I just find the center of the netting in this case right about here. And then take that rock and tie a little knot around it. This way I don't put any holes in the netting. And it will tie directly up to the mosquito bar. Camp's all set up now. I have my mosquito netting over my blanket. That should keep me free from insect bites tonight. And then for dinner, I pick some onions out of the garden and then a potato from the root cellar and then I have something special over here it's called portable soup some people call this bouillon this was invented a long time ago and in fact it was used in the Lewis and Clark expedition to make soup so I'm going to use this and some other seasonings to mix this with the potatoes and also the pill bugs. Pill bugs should taste, and I have again I haven't had these pill bugs, uh, sometimes called wood lice before. They they're supposed to taste like like shrimp. Okay, now that the water's boiling, I'm going to put the shrimp in. You don't have to cook them very long. They should be just about done. They're just as safe to eat as shrimp from the ocean. They don't turn red, however, they stay a bluish color. It's about time to take them out the fire. Pine needles make a good strainer. You want to try some first? Okay, I'll try it. Mmm, they're actually pretty good. They do taste like shrimp. I'm going to add portable soup now. The soup's almost done. It's time to add the uh, pill bugs and the wood sorrel. So I'll add that right now and then we'll just cook those for a few more minutes. I know what some of you are thinking. It's crazy to eat pill bugs. But really they're no different from other crustaceans. It's getting dark. I'm going to keep the fire going all night, but I'm going to keep it going smoky because the purpose isn't heat. 
is to keep the mosquitoes away. And I'll be throwing wax myrtle uh, leaves on it. I also have wax myrtle underneath and around the bed. Well, I'm going to see your guys in the morning. And this mosquito netting should keep everybody out who doesn't belong here. So, well, see you later. Let's see, let me get down here all the way. Get all the ends down so nobody can get in. Oh, that's comfy. Sweet dreams. Breakfast sure looks good. Bacon, potato, onions, and eggs. Want to try some? The eggs look really good, don't they? Mmm. I'm going to brush my teeth. In the 1800s, dental hygiene wasn't too good. People didn't brush their teeth very often. And when they did, they often used branches or sticks. Now, like I said a couple weeks ago, uh, the wax myrtle is the mini mart of the forest. It also makes an excellent toothbrush. Uh, the plant is fibrous and when you chew on it, it, it breaks down into little fibers like a toothbrush. It's Origel wasn't invented yet. So what did people do when their gums hurt or if they had a toothache? They used the toothache tree. There's a tree right over here, just a few feet from here. Let's go over and, and I'll show you about the toothache tree. Here's one. You can recognize it by the spines on the bark. Cut off a small branch and chew on it, or when the leaves are out, you can chew on the leaves. They, they don't really taste very good, but your mouth will go numb. And in the old days, if you had a really, really bad toothache, you'd chew on this and then get a friend to pull your tooth out. My gums are numb. And if I had a toothache, it wouldn't feel so bad. When you start out on a day's tramp, you don't always need to follow the trails. You can walk randomly and plunge into the pathless forest. This is sometimes called a random scoot. This can lead to exciting adventure, and you will undoubtedly see things that are unusual. Uh, now, now, don't worry, I have a compass and a map, and I know the area very well, so I won't get lost. Why don't you come along? Okay, which way? Right or left? Left? Okay. It's really dense in here. This is really interesting.
Which way? Left or right? You want left? We're going to go over that way? Okay. Oh look, I see something interesting. It's red bud. Red buds are tasty to eat. I'm just going to nibble a few. Mmm. Wish I found these earlier. I would have added them to my soup last night. But they're also good for salad. You never know what you're going to find on a random scoot. You should try it sometime. But make sure that you know the area and you have a map and a compass. It's about time for me to get back to the cabin. So I have a map of the area and a compass. Okay, I think the trail's over that way a few yards. Let's, let's see if I'm right. The bearing is 200 degrees, so the trail should be right over there. On my way. <laughs>